Hey, what's going on, guys, and welcome to another episode of Cornerstone Quick Tips. My name is Josh Donnelly, and in today's episode, we are going to take a look at how to leverage some of the behind-the-scenes features of the native sliders element within Cornerstone. Now, while that might sound super abstract, let me tell you a little bit more about what we're going to accomplish here today. As you may or may not know, the native slider element within Cornerstone has some great built-in features and designs for things like pagination, like this little guy right down here, or like next slide and previous slide, like these little arrows right here. But what if you wanted to take that a step further and create your own pagination progress bar like what we have up here, and then also be able to style the active current slide like we have here with this blue outline. And we are able to accomplish this all natively within Cornerstone, leveraging some of the advanced features behind the scenes. So without further ado, let's dive in and begin building this slider together. So here we are in the Cornerstone Builder, and as you can see right here, I have the makeup of what we were viewing on the front end, but we are going to do this from scratch together. So let's create a new section right here, and this is going to house our new slider that we're building. Now to be able to visually see this section, I'm just going to add a little bit of a gray background here just so you can kind of see where I'm working on this slider. Now, you can do this one of two ways. You could add a container and then drag the slider element in. But what I like to do is simply click on the section itself, come right up here in the workspace window, and where it says add row, I'm going to hold down the command or control key and it'll change that to add element. I can now click on that and I can type in slider and I'm gonna add an inline slider here. And as you can see, it added the slider to the root level of our section. Now, before we get started, this is obviously an opinionated style, but I'm going to get rid of our default navigation and our default pagination here simply because we are creating something in place of that. So I'm simply going to delete the pagination. I'm gonna click on my slide container here, go up a level, and where it says slide navigation, we're gonna go ahead and delete that as well. So now we have a slider with no way to control it and no way to tell what our active state is in the slider, which gives us a perfect canvas to begin creating our progress bar. So now what we wanna do is create a div above our slider that's going to house our progress bar. So we'll select the section, We'll come up here where it says add row, and again, hold down the command or control key, add an element, and I'm gonna use the new div global margin element, which is using the global margin that a row or a grid would respect as well without having to add any further settings to it there. We'll go ahead and select this and just add some bottom margin. Let's go with four M's here just to space things out nicely. And now with that done, we can begin building our progress bar. For the sake of organization, let's go ahead and give this div global margin a name that can help us identify it in our build structure here. So we'll double click here and we'll call this progress bar container. So this is going to contain everything that we have to build for our progress bar. Now we know that our progress bar has a headline and graphic here and a headline and graphic here and then the progress bar in between. So let's go ahead and begin adding those. Let's add an element and we'll add a headline. And this could be any element. I chose the headline because it's nice and easy and already has a graphic element built into it. So we'll go ahead and add a headline here. Let's make that headline a span. Let's enable our graphic. Let's add a back arrow. We'll type in left and we'll choose an arrow. I'm gonna choose this short one here. And that headline will be for our current slide. Now we know we want another headline, so we'll duplicate this here. This one is going to be for our total slides, and we want the arrow to be on the other side, and we want that arrow to be pointed right, so we'll type in right and choose this arrow here. Now, that's looking pretty good, but things are kind of spaced out wonky here, and that's because on our progress bar container, which I'm going to select here, we want to enable Flexbox. So we're gonna turn on Flexbox here, and then we want this to be Flexbox Center All. And now everything is looking pretty good and we have our two headlines in the middle, but we also want them to be on the same line. So we're going to jump over to Flex Direction, which is currently set to column up and down. And we want that to be row left and right. And now they're going to be on the same line. Now let's begin building our progress bar in between those two headlines. So we're gonna jump back up to the top and right between headline one and headline two, we're going to click add element and we're gonna add a div inside of that. Now this div is actually going to be our progress bar base. And that is the gray part of the progress bar that we see down here. So we're going to click on this and we'll give it the name progress bar base. 
Now let's give it a gray color, something that's just sort of muted. Let's go a little darker than that just so we can kind of see it in our build here. That's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and uh, round out our border radius. Let's give it 100 M so it's nice and round. And I know this isn't looking like a progress bar yet, but you're going to see this come together as we're working on it. We also know that we want this progress bar to be somewhere in the realm of 500 pixels. That was the number that I chose. So let's add 500 pixels. And you might have to adjust that based on your responsiveness. But for the sake of this example, we'll just do 500 pixels flat there. So now we have that and that's looking pretty good. And then something I like to do when I'm building these progress bars out is just add a standard margin all the way around. So we'll link this together and we'll add one M all the way around, which spaces out our headlines on the left and right nicely. And I think that's looking pretty good. Now within our progress bar base, we are going to scroll up and we are going to add another element here. And this is going to be another div. And now this div inside of our progress bar base, we are going to call this the progress bar. And this one, we're gonna give an accent color that helps it stand out as the progress bar. I think that's looking pretty good there. Now I could test this progress bar to see what it looks like real quick. We could type in width 70% and make sure that we can still see our progress bar base behind it there. I also know that I want it to respect the base's border radius. So I'm gonna click on the base here where it says X overflow visible, I'm gonna set that to hidden. And where it says Y overflow visible, I'm going to set that to hidden as well. And so now our progress bar is respecting the border radius of our progress bar base. Now inside of that progress bar, I'm going to scroll down to where it says height and it has auto. I'm going to set that to something like five pixels to give it a base height. And then we'll give it a max height of five pixels as well. Let's jump into our progress bar base and do the same thing. We'll give it a height of five pixels and a max height of five pixels as well. And now that's looking pretty good right there. I'm actually, for the sake of this example, just so you can kind of see what's going on here, I'm actually going to make that a base of 10 just to make it a little larger for this video. So then we'll make sure to go into our progress bar as well and give that a base of 10 also. And now I think things are looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and save this and we'll jump out to the front end of our site and refresh. And here you'll notice we have short and sweet headline on the left, short and sweet headline on the right, and a progress bar that isn't really doing much just yet, but I think the style is looking pretty good. So now to calculate the distance that our progress bar should fill here, we need to use some variables. And if we jump over to the cornerstone sliders documentation, you'll notice that we have different variables that we can tap into. Now, these are not dynamic content variables. These are CSS variables. And so we are going to leverage these to calculate our total and our current and to create a percentage. But before we do all of that calculation, we wanna make sure that our slider is properly tracking those numbers in the first place. And the easiest way to do this is to scroll down to this dynamic content right here, which returns a string wrapped in a span to reflect the current index of your slider and the total number of slides in your slider. Let's actually start with the total. We'll copy this to our clipboard and we'll jump back over to Cornerstone. And here on the right-hand side is where we wanna list out our total. So we're simply going to click on that headline, edit the text, and paste in that dynamic content. And you'll notice it looks like it's off. It says that we have two slides when we know that we have more than that. So why is that? Well, if we jump into our slider itself, you'll notice that on the left-hand side here, we have scroll by content, which basically creates pages. So we basically have two pages of slides. But what I like to do is scroll by slide. And as I change this to scroll by slide, notice our number two up there is going to change to six because now it is tracking six total slides. So that's looking pretty good there. Let's go ahead and test this on our current slide as well. We'll copy this to our clipboard jump back over here and in this headline, we will paste our current slide dynamic content. And here you can see we're currently on slide one of six. Now, to test this out even further, we can actually click on headline one, go into customize, add an attribute, and we want this to be our previous button. So we want this to go back in slides. And so what we're gonna use, if we scroll up to our custom attribute section here, you'll notice that we can use data X slide prev for previous slides. So we'll go ahead and add that in here. And then in this one here, even though this is the total, we also want this to go to next slide when it's clicked. So we'll come in here and we'll grab data X slide next, jump back into cornerstone and we'll go to customize, add attribute, 
data x slide next so now if i go to slide two you'll notice this says slide two if i go to slide three it says slide three four five six and then it resets back to one so that's looking pretty good, but as you'll notice, our progress bar isn't budging at all. And this is where the real magic comes in. We are going to use a very simple calculation to create a percentage for this progress bar to fill. So let's go ahead and click on our progress bar, and as you'll see, we have 20% entered in there currently. I'm going to use Command Option B to open up breakout mode here where we have our width. And now we're going to enter in a calculation. And just so you guys can actually see this taking shape here, I'm going to go ahead and stretch out our workspace so you can see the calculation being entered in here. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to type in calc for calculation. We're going to open our parentheses and we're going to enter in our variable for current slide. So let's go back down here to where we have custom properties and we want current slide. Now this is a CSS variable. So we're going to come in here and say calc variable current slide divided by variable and then we want the total slides. So let's come in here and grab x slide total. So we're basically saying divide the current slide by the total slides and multiply that by 100% to create a calculation. And that's looking pretty good, but you'll notice nothing is happening here. And that's because we need to add some context for everything that we're building here. As you'll notice, some of this dynamic content that we're using does its best to find the nearest slider and assume that that's the one that you want to pull the dynamic content from. But we can force context by simply clicking on a parent container. This could be a div or in our case, the section going into customize here and adding context. So we're gonna click on add attribute. And if we jump back into our cornerstone slider docs here and we scroll up to our custom attributes, you'll notice that we have an attribute for context. And again, it's not required, but it helps add additional context when you have multiple things going on here. So data X slide context. We'll jump back into cornerstone we'll go ahead and add that right back in here and when i do that watch what happens with our progress bar calculation on the right hand side here it immediately has context for where it's at and when we click on our next button it increments up nicely until we get to 100. and the great thing here is if we go back into our slides and we add a few more slides the calculation immediately scales with us and then it knows the percentage of six out of nine and if we go ahead and we save this and we jump out to the front end of our site and we refresh this, you'll notice that we're on slide one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it properly calculated everything there. So while this tells you which slide is the active slide, we aren't really styling the active slide in any way in our slider. So how do we add something like this one here where we put a box or maybe a shadow or something unique around the active slide? How do we go about doing something like that? Well, it's actually super simple using the class is current slide. So what we're going to do is jump back into cornerstone here and in our slider that we're creating here, let's go ahead and jump into the slide container, click on customize and edit element CSS. And right in here, all we're going to do is add dollar sign EL. So that is specifically targeting this slider, not any other sliders that we have on the page. And then we're going to add the class period is dash current dash slide okay that's looking pretty good we'll open up our curly brackets and inside of here let's go ahead and add some styling we're going to do uh let's do border two pixels solid we'll do red so we can see it and make sure it's working and that's looking pretty good right there now for the sake of this example let's go ahead and match our progress bar color here so we'll get out of breakout mode here we'll go to our background color and we'll copy this to our clipboard We'll go back into our slide container in our element CSS, and we'll add that RGB value right here. And now I think that's looking pretty good as well. Now, maybe we don't want this to be left justified as our focal point. We want it to be center justified. We can simply click on our slider container here, go into primary, and where it says justify start, we could set that to justify center. And now our selection is always going to be in the middle. Now we might also want to turn on a carousel to sort of add to this effect. So let's go ahead and do that. Now it's always the selection in the middle. And maybe we want an interval with 5,000 milliseconds here. And now things are looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and save this and we'll jump out to the front end of the site and we'll refresh. And now you'll notice we have our selection in the middle slide one 
and I'm not going to move here at all. And when five seconds hits and it goes to slide two, the styling of slide two is our active styling. And it tells us it's on slide two right here of nine. We could then click this some more and you'll notice it continues styling our active slide and telling us where we're at of how many. Now, the great thing here is what if you wanted this to stop when the mouse is hovered over it? Well, if you click on your slide container, you'll actually find a nifty setting for that as well, where we have pause on hover. So if I were to activate this and save and jump back out to the front end of our site here and refresh, now you'll notice after five seconds, it's going to jump to slide two, which we'll do right here. But now if I hover on this, this one isn't going to change while our original one down below goes to the next slide. As soon as my mouse hovers off of this, our interval begins ticking again, and now when it hits five seconds, it'll go to slide three. Now, we're just working on one example of this and creating a nice user experience for our slider here, but the sky is truly the limit for creating custom native sliders within Cornerstone. As always, I hope you guys find these videos useful, and I will see you guys in the next video. Happy building!